All right. Again, good afternoon. Thank you for your patience. Um, so before we got before we get started today, you guys were to navigate to the, to the digital design my learning site, navigate to the module labeled Photoshop text undo zoom hand and selecting tools, and you were supposed to download that sunflowers JPEG. Now, for those of you who weren't able to do that, and I didn't I didn't want you to open it in Photoshop yet. So if you did anything with it, like undo what you've done, but it so so you should have done this, downloaded the file, and then in Photoshop created a document that's 700 by 550 by 72 by RGB color mode. Okay, now, real quick, before we get into the process of downloading the image, I know by looking at this, these specs, if you will, the specifications of this document, that because it's RGB color mode, I know that this document's gonna be used for what? Computers, screens, yes, because RGB is light color, right? RGB is light color. CMYK is print color. Those are those inks that they use, right? RGB is light. So light sources are for screens. That's your cell phone, a tablet, a laptop, a desktop, a projection screen. That's light RGB. So we know that this document is intended for some type of screen, and because the resolution is set to 72, what type of screen do you think it's for? It could be a phone. Sure, because your phone screen is not very big. Um, websites, those type of things, right? So it's going to be, this, the quality of the image is not to be, not need to be very high. 72 keeps the file size small, which allows it to upload real quick on our devices. So yes, based on those settings, you guys should quickly find, like, be able to say, like, this is what this document's intended for. Again, this will be on the initial certification exam. So you need to be comfortable looking at a document specifications and saying, you know what? Based on those specs, it's going to be the, this. All right. Neither here nor there. Let's go ahead and get back to what I wanted to show you, which was how to get into uh, downloading that image. Again, a lot of you looks like they've already done it from what I'm seeing. Uh, but for those of you who might not know how to do that, again, we're navigating to week two. And we're going to the module that's Photoshop, text, undo, zoom, hand, and selecting tools. And there is that sunflowers image. We're just going to click on it. So if you're following along with me, we're just going to click on it. There's the image. From here, all you have to do is right click. If you did anything else other than this, then you did it wrong. So again, we're saving this image. So by right clicking on the image, and I'm going to back out and do that again in case you're like, what? I didn't do it that way. So again, here's that module, Photoshop text, undo zoom hand and select tools. It's in this week's module. There's the link for the sunflower. I'm going to click on it. That's it. Just left click. Boom. There it is. It opens up. From here, I'm going to right click and select save image as. It's going to prompt me to save this in a location. In this instance, I'm going to select my downloads folder. You can see I've already done this a couple times today. I'm going to do it again. So in my downloads folder, I'm going to click save. And there it goes. That's all I had to do. I can close that screen out. I can close my learning out. I can jump right into Photoshop. And now I'm ready to create, if I haven't already done so, create that document that's 700 by 550 by 72 RGB. Remember that. The sizing is pixels. Be careful. Make sure you're using pixels. And we're clicking create. All right. To start this lesson off, we're going to talk about the selection tool. So all you should have on your screen is Photoshop and a blank screen. If you have anything else other than that, you are not following along correctly. So I'm going to walk around and make sure that we have the selection tool. Its main purpose is to select a range of pixels. I'll say that again. The selection tools, and there's lots of different selection tools. We're going to go through all of them today. But those selection tools are meant for one thing and one thing only, and that's to select a range of pixels. Keyword there being pixels. Therefore, we can make a safe assumption that the selection tool will not work with vector items, such as what? What did we work with yesterday that's a vector tool? Shape, 
right? And, and yes, I know it's not the shapes tool. I know that it's the rectangle tool and the poly, poly, polygram, polygram, what is it, polygram? Polygram, yeah, that. Uh, the line tool, the special shapes tool, right? I, I know that, right? But that tool is a vector-based tool. It's a vector-based tool. The brush that we used the day before is a raster base tool. Now, what do we know about raster versus vector? What is raster? Right, pixels. And vector is non. So, yes, vector is non pixel based, raster is pixel based. The shapes tool, all of those different shapes tools, those are vector type tools. The brush tool is a pixel based tool. So, the selection tool can only select pixels. So can we select parts of a vectored element? I see you shaking your heads. You are correct. The answer is no. You can't because they're not pixels. But you can see them on the screen. Yes, you can see it on the screen, but I promise you they're not pixels. I'll demonstrate what how this works. So I'm going to go back over here to my shapes tool specifically. Let's do the ellipse tool. I'm going to click and select or create an, ellip, uh, an ellipse vectored element. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm foreshadowing what we're about to do. So just hang tight, watch my screen. It will make sense and help you along the way. All right, so there's my vectored element, right? I can see it living on my layers panel. If I, and so here's a selection tool. We're, I, I promise you, I'm going to show you what and why we do this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and make, I have that layer selected. I'm going to make a selection and I'm going to hit delete or backspace on my screen. And it says, could not complete your, complete your quest because the content of the layer is not directly editable. Why is it not directly editable? Because it's non Pixel based. Perfect timing. So let me create that layer and do a brush. So the layer is selected. I have a brush stroke. I'm going to select again the selection tool, hit backspace, pixels are gone. Okay. So again, just to demonstrate that real quick, your selection tools will only work on rastered elements, okay? As we go throughout the year, you're gonna be working with lots of different things and you're gonna to wanna to use the selection tools at time and you're gonna have an issue like, oh, I can't select this, what's going on? And I'm gonna come over and say, well, that's because that's a vectored element and selection tools can't affect vectored elements. All right, we good? All right, so let's talk about the selection tools. In the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you're going to see a tool that looks like a rectangle square and it looks like it's been broken up into little chunks like it's little dotted lines right this is your one of your selection groups there's actually three of them here they are right and we're going to go through each one of these so just hang tight uh, this first grouping is called your marquee tool there are rectangle marquee tools ellipse marquee tools and then there's a single row and single column, which I have yet to figure out what those two do. I'm sure there's a precise purpose for it, but nonetheless, they're there. The next grouping is going to be your lasso tools. And then the last grouping is going to be your quick selection tools. We're going to go through all of these today rather quickly. Those are pretty simple, pretty straightforward. All right. I don't need anything on my screen because I can see a selection just by making one. So if again, you're watching, I'm going to grab that tool. What's the shortcut for the rectangular marquee tool? M is in, yep, M is in mic. All right. And if I simply click and drag, I can make a selection. So I know if you're in the further away from the, it's kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see there's a rectangle or a square there, right? Now, what I'm doing here is I am creating a new selection because I can see here this little button here. That's your new selection button. There's a bunch of other buttons there that we're going to take a look at here later. But this little guy here, that's your new selection. By default, that's already marked. So every time I click on my canvas to make a selection, it creates a new selection. And feel free to do that yourself. Now, to the right of that, you'll see there's a add to selection. So if I click on the add to selection button, you'll see that now when I click and drag my mouse, 
I know it's, it's hard to see because it, it kind of lags a little bit, but you'll see that I've added to that selection. So in fact, every time I click and drag my mouse, and it's lagging a little bit, so be patient with me. You'll see that I've added a selection to that screen. Now, hang in there. I'm going to bring it home because you're probably wondering, like, why in the world would you want to do that? But it'll make sense here in a second. Yeah. Right, so in the, uh, all the way at to the top of your toolbar, right, so way up here at the top of your options toolbar, there's four buttons. This is the new selection. This next one is the add to the selection. What do you think the next one's going to do? Take away or subtract. Yes, absolutely. Good. Okay, so let me make those selections again. Yep, there they are. So now I'm going to go to subtract. And now as I click and drag, oh, it didn't like that. Now as I click and drag, you'll see that I'm actually taking away from the selection. I can even go inside of that selection and take away there. Mm, ah. And then lastly is the intersecting selections. So now, based on where my new selection is, based on where it's intersecting with the others, I'll have now a new selection created based on the intersection of those two. And eventually it'll just start to dwindle down to nothing because, again, it's the intersection. Now, again, nested inside of that tool is the elliptical marquee tool. And again, it works the same way. So there's my ellipse. I can add to that ellipse. I can even take away, not just by with the same tool, but I can also switch it up. I can go right back to rectangle. So now I can subtract. I think I lost my selections. Let me go back to make a selection. There we go. I'm going to add an ellipse. And then I can also take away as well as take away with the square. So I can, I can go back and forth between all of my selection tools to create that selection. Okay. To deselect, right, you've made a selection, maybe you're done with that selection, how do I get rid of it? Well, there's a button for that, imagine that. Under the application toolbar, all the way at the top, you'll see that there's a little section called select. Okay. Now, I, I said this before, I'm going to keep saying this throughout the year, I don't have enough time in the entire screen here to see every little nuance of Photoshop. However, as well as I don't have the test questions for Photoshop. I know the category and kind of what you'll be asked, but I don't know the specific questions for the task. But I know this, I teach enough of Photoshop that you should use some deductive reasoning that if you're dealing with anything related to making selections, you should be able to find it under your main menu, right? So if you go to the application toolbar and click on select, there's a bunch of options. So now it's just trying to figure out where that stuff is. So I'll, I'll teach you guys those test taking strategies as we get deeper into the year. But know this, like if I'm talking about the select option here, I mean, you can look, you can read them, you can see what's all there, right? We can select all. Here's your deselect. So if you want to deselect, there it is. Shortcut is what? Control D, thank you. We can reselect. We can inverse a selection. We can select all layers, we can deselect layers, we can find layers, isolate layers, select the color range, select the focus area, select the subject, et cetera, right? There's all these different other things in here um, that you need to be aware of. And if you need to, you can, you know, you can dig in there and find it during the test. We'll talk about that later. But I want to deselect this. So control D or select, deselect. Now, I just want you to watch real quick, just so that I can kind of demonstrate as to like why you would possibly use this technique or tool. I'm just going to grab a bunch of rectangles and I'm just going to, I'm going to add to this selection. All right, so I have a bunch of selections here. Now watch this. I'm going to come in here with my brush tool and I'm going to click and I'm going to start painting. Ready? Here it goes. There's my click. Am I painting? 
Are you sure? Where am I painting? In the selection, the area, right, only in the area in which I've selected. So that's how you would use selections is maybe you want to isolate a series of pixels. And inside of that series of pixels, you want something to happen. Maybe you're painting them. Maybe you're adding a special effect to them. I, I don't know. There's lots of different things that you can do that you will do. And we'll, we'll start to look at that as we get deeper into Photoshop. But that's, that's an example of, of selections. Yes. Okay, so here we go. Ready? I'm going to make this real easy for you. Control D to deselect, right? I'm going to make one selection, just one selection. There it is, square. I'm going to grab the paintbrush tool, right? The tool that we used the last couple of days. And now I'm just going to click and drag, and now it will only allow me to paint inside of that selected area because I have that selection. If I don't have a selection, then I can paint as, as I want because, well, I'm not isolating any particular area. Remember, control Z to undo. Good question. Good question. Good little review there. All right, awesome. Now, to take a look at these other selection tools, I think we need an actual image to look at because I think it will make more sense as we start to use and demonstrate that. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and open up. So we can either click File, Open, and then we can select that sunflower image, or if you prefer to close this document out. Now, remember, um, when I say close a document, right? What I'm talking about is this. Don't don't close out Photoshop. Like that, you, know, you have to restart it. Like, oh, that's a pain, right? Right there, there's a tab of the document that you're working inside of Photoshop. So we can click this little X here to close that document out. So X closes it out. We can either click open, we can click file open, or we can do the shortcut control O as an Oscar. Either way, we want to open this sunflower. And this is what you should see. We're going to walk around the class, make sure everybody has that open in Photoshop. And if we have some issues, then we'll problem solve them as we go. Awesome job. So everybody has the image open. So if you think about it, right, we've covered quite a bit in this class so far, right? We've gone over the user interface. We've talked about the workspace, how to create a workspace, how to reset a workspace. We've started talking about how to manage a document inside of Photoshop using our layers panel. We started to get into some of the creative tools, such as the paintbrush, the shape tool. Now we're learning about selections. Today we also covered how to download an image off the internet, right? So simply you find that image. Typically, by right-clicking on it, you can click Save Image As. That saves the image. And then, of course, opening an image in Photoshop, the way we would do this is we would click File Open, or from our welcome screen, you can click on Open, or that shortcut Control O as an Oscar. That will also allow you to open. Then we just navigate to where we save that document. Boom, we open it up, right? And then, so that's what we're looking at today is the image that we downloaded from the internet. There's the sunflower. So now let's go a little bit deeper into some of these tools. So we already talked about the marquee tool. So now let's talk about the lasso tools. So there's a bunch of different lasso tools. And you'll see here basically in the demonstration here, it's just drawing to create a selection. And in this instance, kind of like a lasso, right? Like a lasso, if you think of a lasso, it's a rope. And what's inside that circle is what you wrangle up, right? If we click and hold in here, you'll see that not only do we have the lasso tool, but we also have a polygonal lasso tool and a magnetic lasso tool. Now, for the first parts of this, just watch my screen. I promise you, you're going to be able to play with all of these. But just watch. I'm going to quickly jump through all of these. They're pretty self-explanatory. You could probably figure it out, but I want to make sure that you understand what each tool does. So the lasso tool does just that. If I want to select a range of pixels, I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag, and that's going to allow me to make a quick selection. However, Control D to deselect. I want to be very specific. So I want to grab the inside of this flower. So first of all, what might help me get closer to selecting the exact pixels? What, what would help me here? Yeah, if I zoomed in, right? So let's talk about those tools real quick. At the very bottom of your screen, you're going to see a little magnifying glass. This is your zoom tool. Shortcut is Z. Above that, you have the hand tool. Shortcut is H. The zoom tool will allow you to zoom in and out. 
the hand tool will allow you to navigate within your Zoom. If I grab this hand tool now, if I grab this hand tool now, there's like I am zoomed out to where this fits my screen. So I can't really move around. So if I grab that magnifying glass, and I believe you guys have it set up to zoom, uh, scroll zoom. I have mine set up to zoom scroll. I don't know why it's not working, but whatever. Um, I think it's because I'm, I, I, whatever. I think my resources are tied up in, graph, in the graphics card, but neither here nor there. So if I click to zoom in, you'll see that I can zoom in all the way down to the pixel base, right? Like I'm, I am as close as you can get to a single pixel. Okay. I am zoomed in at 12,800%. How do I know that? That's pretty precise, Mr. Webster. Like, seriously, how do you know that? So right down here at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you should see that it has at what percentage you are zoomed in at. Okay, a lot of times troubleshooting things with your document, right? How many, like some of you have, how many of you did the inches instead of pixels when you created a document? Yeah, let's see a couple of you raise your hand. Yeah. So if you had looked at the bottom, which is what I did when I came over to your screen, if you had looked at the bottom corner of your screen, you would have seen that you were, you could see the whole image, but you were zoomed out at 0.0001%. Like that's, that's like really far back, which means that document is huge. Okay. There are also some shortcuts um, to help you navigate within the document. First of all, the hand tool, shortcut H, right? So now with the hand tool, I can move around in the document. I also have my little scroll bar down here that will allow me to scroll within the document. I can also use control minus. So if I hold down the control key and hit the minus button, I can also back out of the image. So now I'm looking at this at 8.33%. Or control plus, we'll zoom back in. Or control zero will snap back to where your that image fills your screen. So again, control plus minus or control zero. Control zero snaps you back to you where you can see the screen. Now, a little bit of time-saving tips, if you will. So watching my screen, uh, let's say, for example, I want to color this just this leaf right here. Okay, so I, I want to get precise with it. So I'm going to press. First of all, I'm going to select the tool I want to use. I'm going to use the brush tool. Okay, I'm going to right click, make this a little bit smaller so I can work with this a little bit better. Perfect. Now I'm going to press and hold the Z key. What tool do I have right now? All right, how do you know that? Say again. I showed you. Yeah, I showed you which I clicked on. But if I look at my cursor, it's a what? It's a circle, so I can, that's a safe assumption, right? I have the brush tool selected. Plus I can look at here and I can see that that's indented, so I know it's the brush tool. Okay, so I'm gonna press and hold Z. What icon is it now? Magnifying glass, thank you for those that are a little closer to the screen, right? If I let go of the Z button, I go back to what? Brush, so by pressing and holding Z, that will momentarily select that tool, and when I release the Z, it'll bring me back. So watch this, ready? Press and hold Z. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to release the Z. I'm now back to the brush I had selected. I'm going to press and hold H. What tool do I have now? The hand tool. Now I can click and drag within the document. I'm going to release the H. Now I'm back to my brush tool. So now I can do my little brush. Okay. Control Z to undo. Control zero to go back to full screen. All right. So just some, some helpful tips to work efficiently. Okay, so again, it's just momentarily holding that key and then releasing it. That'll bring you back to where you were. All right, back to the selection. Sorry, kind of went off on a tangent there. All right, so yes, I, I need to zoom into this flower. So yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just press Z to get to the zoom tool. That's fine. And now I'm going to click and I'm going to zoom in on the middle of this flower, at least to, to where it fits my screen. And now I'll go back to that lasso tool, shortcut L. Now, if you're watching my screen, you can see here that you can get pretty precise with this. However, man, this is tedious, right? Like I'm trying to grab every little pixel that's dark. Oh, this, like, oh my gosh, this is so painful. Ah, I'm done, right? Well, not quite, because I need to add some. So I can hold down the shift button to add 
and I can continue to add to this selection, and I can come in here and get real precise. If I need to, I'm going to momentarily hold Z, let go of Z, I'm back to my tool, shift button, I can add these pixels in, hold the alt key, I can get rid of these pixels, get rid of that pixel, hold the shift key, add that pixel, right? Very time consuming, yes? Yeah, absolutely. Control zero, Oops. control zero to zoom back out, control D to deselect. So probably not the best tool. So let's see what else we have in our bag of tricks here. The polygonal lasso tool. All right, let's see how this works. So again, I'm going to momentarily hold the Z, to zoom in, release the Z, I'm back to my polygonal lasso. So now with the polygonal lasso, the way this works is every time I click, I'm creating a point. And I don't know if this is any faster than the regular lasso tool. Maybe a little more precise, but man, there's a lot of clicking, right? Oh, give me a break. I'm tired of this. Okay. So again, every click I make allows me to add a point. And when I double click, that makes my selection. Workable could certainly make that selection but there's got to be something easier, right? Why would Webster drag this out if there wasn't? The magnetic lasso tool. Again, just watching my screen. If you want to follow along, that's fine, but just make sure you're watching my screen and seeing what I do. So I'm going to click, one time click, and now I'm going to drag with that click. And you'll see here that this works a little bit faster, doesn't it? A lot faster, actually. So again, pretty, that's pretty good, right? Like a lot faster than any of the other tools and certainly more precise than the other tools. So we're getting closer to a pretty doggone good tool. Nice selection, still some minor adjustments I need to do. So I'm going to bet that there's probably some better tools to use. And if you were betting, you would win. The lasso tool, question on the lasso tool. Again, just another way to make a selection. And a selection is nothing more than selecting a range of pixels. Below that, the last grouping of selection tools. You have three of them, the object selection tool, the quick selection tool, and the magic one tool. That, that automatically sounds faster, doesn't it? Like the object selection tool. Like no doubt that's going to be awesome, right? Let's do it. Object selection tool. Now with the object selection tool, it works very similar to the re rectangular marquee tool. Only this time, when we make that marquee selection, watch what happens. Boom. Like, a lot better, a lot faster, much more efficient. However, uh, there's still some adjustments, right? So if I zoom in here, like, it didn't quite grab all those. So guess what? No big deal. Maybe I jump back into my lasso tool, hold the shift button, and I'm going to add those pixels back in. Hold minus to zoom out. Z to zoom back in. Okay. Pretty doggone good selection there. Not bad if I do say so. Control D to deselect. Let's take a look at what the other one does. Quick selection tool. So you'll see that with this, it looks like a paintbrush. Well, that's exactly what you do. I'm going to start inside with the darker pixels here. So I'm going to click and drag. And you can see instantly it starts to grab all of those darker pixels and then boom, it's done just as good. If not better, I think it's a little better actually. And of course, just like the brush tool, I can use those brackets to make it bigger or smaller. So if I need to jump in here with the zoom tool and then make my brush a little bit smaller, I can hold down the shift button to add. And now I can just add those pixels in. But then you'll see that I got some other pixels. Mine, the alt key to minus some pixels. There we go. So we can tighten that up. Control zero to zoom out. Z to zoom back in. Control D to deselect. And then the very last tool is the magic wand. Now the magic wand tool, well, let's see what happens. 
And sorry, I, let me set mine to the default. Ignore what I just did there. All right, how does this tool work for you? Good or bad? What are you thinking? Very difficult, right? What's happening with the magic wand tool is this. The magic wand, while the object selection and the selection paintbrush tool, while that will allow you to select a range of different colors, right, and it includes all of those colors into that range of your selection, what the magic wand tool does is it actually select what, or it doesn't, you select. It will make its selection based on the pixel that you click on and the tolerance range in which you have set for that. So if you look at the top of your screen, on your options toolbar, there's a tolerance section. So our tolerance right now by default, I believe you guys have it too, is set to 32. So that tolerance range is from one to 255. So there are 255 uh, types of blues, 255 types of greens, 255 types of reds, and based on the pixel that you select and the tolerance that you have selected, it, it selects that range. So let me give you a better example, because this is not really the best example, because I, I click on a dark pixel and it just selects all the dark pixels. So let's, let's give you a better uh, example of that. Control zero to zoom out, control G to deselect. Where am I at? There we go. All right, so I have the magic wand selected. I'm gonna click on the blue area. And you can see there it selects all of that blue, but it excludes parts of that green. If I zoom in over here, oops. if I zoom in over here, I can see it selected all that blue, but you can still see it's not quite perfect, right? Like there's still parts of this blue that it just doesn't quite select. So what I would need to do, let me zoom out again, deselect, control D to deselect. I'm gonna increase my range, let's increase that to let's say 100. And now when I make that selection, you'll see that I get a lot of a, a much more tighter selection, but I'm now getting into some of those greens. Control zero, control D to deselect. What if I use a tolerance of, uh, let's say 100 and I select the yellow, let's see what happens here. Yeah, it selects, but let's go to 255. How about if we go to 255? Let's see what that does. Yeah, I mean, it almost selects everything except for what? The blue. Okay, so again, that tolerance is basically saying, you know, oops, zero, sorry, zero to 255. That tolerance is basically saying, you know what? I only want a range of this blue. And so that magic wand will help you select that. Okay, so here, here it is in application, right? So. Let's say, for example, I want to change the inside of this flower. I use the object selection tool. I'm going to come over here to my brush tool. I'm going to, we'll use, we'll use pink, sure. I'm going to change my blend mode to, let's do lighten. And let's go with it. Make my brush a little bigger here. So I'm at 100% opacity, but because I have the blend mode set to lighten, I can see that now I'm lightening those pixels based on my selection. Control D to deselect. And now, now I've changed the appearance of that image. The last thing I'll leave you with is this. Where did we paint those pixels? So we've pretty much ruined this, this graphic, right? Yeah, pretty much. So not the best practice, right? So what I want you guys to get familiar with, I'm undoing all this, is if you're working on an original image, to simply duplicate that layer, so that way you have something to work with, and then you can always revert back to your original. So this is how you do it, it's pretty simple. With your mouse, over that layer, background, we're gonna right click and select duplicate layer. I'm gonna come up with a duplicate layer screen, background copy, that sounds like an amazing name, we're gonna go with it. And now we can make that quick selection, grab that brush tool with that background copy layer selected, 
Blend mode is lightened. Here we go. Okay, because remember, when you paint pixels on top of pixels, it's there. That is also called a destructive edit. A destructive edit is when you have, well, done just that. We've, we have manipulated pixels to where they it can't come back. Right? We've painted on top of pixels. So that would be considered an example of a destructive edit. We're going to talk about destructive and non-destructive edits as we go through the year. So that's just a little preview. Don't worry. You don't have to write that one down. But there you go. So again, reviewing what we've done today, right? We've talked about the new stuff for today. We've talked about the range of selection tools. We learned that the selection tools can only affect what type of graphics? Pixels, which pixels are raster, so only rastered elements. Uh, we learned how to add to those selections, subtract to those selections, make more selections, deselect using the select options bar or the shortcut uh, control D. We learned how to zoom within a document. We learned how to move within that document. We learned how to download an image. We learned how to open an image in Photoshop. Bam, look at that, right on the belt. You guys have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow.